Hi, so here we are on that last video in the series. So we started out with triggering people, then understanding your anger. Now let's talk about the self-sabotaging behaviors. So here we go. Let's get into it. Now it's important to realize that typically you have the triggering people, right? Then you have your anger, which we discussed. Now, and typically what happens is after an anger expression, then most individuals, particularly those along the BPD spectrum, then go inward. And it's important to recognize some self-sabotaging indicators and behaviors. So I'm going to give you a list of just some. Then we'll talk about three ways that you can help control or stop some of those self-sabotaging behaviors. So first, be aware that staying in your comfort zone and avoiding change can limit your growth. It keeps you stuck. And what happens is, is that a lot of individuals along that BPD spectrum or individuals that are dealing with different mental health issues or just life in general, we all tend to stay in our comfort zone. And comfort zone doesn't necessarily mean it's good and healthy. It just means what we're used to. We really need to be aware of that because we have to challenge that. We have to challenge ourselves because when we don't, we kind of get complacent. And when we get complacent, we get used to these beliefs, behaviors, and patterns that can be really, really destructive to our own development. So that could be one. Another one is setting goals that are too low so you ensure success. And this means doing things that are like super easy or only things that are easy. And the greatest challenge is not only recognizing those things that are difficult, but also working through them because that gives us a sense of confidence, a sense of completion. And you don't always have to do it by yourself. You can find healthy others that help you achieve newer goals, stronger goals that help you realize that you have the ability to do things differently. And when we accomplish very simple goals that are very, very low to our ability level, then we're kind of like, yeah, well, psh, that was easy. It didn't mean anything. But when we achieve higher goals, it's this sense of internal validation. And you don't have to do it by yourself. Find healthy others. Sometimes that could be a mental health provider, a good friend. It could be someone that you trust and care about. Now, another issue of self-sabotaging is trying to control others. And what this does is when you try to control others, you're putting yourself at a massive disadvantage because life has so many random variables. And trying to control others is, is often a way to manage your own sense of self-esteem, your own fears. But in trying to control that other person, often we lose the perspective of what that person's going through. But then we get lost in our own perspective. We lose our own sense of insight because we're so externally focused that we lose what's going on with us. And when we do that, we often self-sabotage, engage in those self-destructive behaviors, and we lose opportunities to grow, to challenge, and learn more about ourselves. Because so much about this is learning about ourselves and learning what those beliefs, behaviors, and patterns are that are so destructive so that then we can do things differently. So we can create different ways of managing the issues that come up in our life. And so many issues are going to come up in our life, your life, my life, everybody's life. And that's just part of the experience. Now, another indicator of self-sabotaging is often making excuses. Now, there are reasons things happen, and there are excuses. So reasons are, this didn't work out, or this happened because, ding, 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 and they are valid, clear, and often supported by the circumstances. Excuses is often something that you feel like an ego hit, you feel unsafe, unsure, and you're like, well, it was this, and it was this. And often, interestingly, that those excuses are often tied in to a lot of your sense of self, a lot of fear, a lot of doubt. And when the excuses don't really hold, you get that internal sense of fear, shame, doubt, inferiority, whatever it may be. And that makes it really hard to deal with it. Whereas the reasons, you're often like, yeah, but that was why. And you recognize that that's what it is and it's less of an emotional hit. So those are some indicators about self-sabotage. Now, how you self-sabotage, there's a lot of different ways that individuals self-sabotage. I gave some examples just a second ago. 
Other ways are that drugs and alcohol, engaging in risky behaviors, harmful behaviors, and also, I think that populating your interpersonal circle, which is, you know, those people that are closest to you, with folks that are unhealthy, that reinforce an unhealthy view of yourself, and we can go all the way back to that first video, those triggering people that know how to push those emotional buttons, right, make you feel really small and broken and all that, and then you internalize it, and then you attack yourself with it. And when you attack yourself, often really negative self-statements. And I have found that a lot of the folks that I work with along the BPD spectrum, that we have to attack those self-statements because they become so instinctual over time that when they're working with me, that when we challenge those things, that's often a big area of struggle. Because reframing it is hard because you have to go back, challenge those beliefs, challenge those behaviors, and change those patterns. And if we keep telling ourselves that we're a loser, we're gross, we're incapable, unlovable, whatever, that family in the head, we call it, it's this chorus, right, in your brain that makes you feel really small and that knows just those horrible things to say to you. And you've internalized those triggering people, which then you manage through anger responses and then you engage in self-sabotage. That, that's why these, these three videos, I think, are so helpful because it helps you learn more about yourself and that empowers you with choice. And that's critical. So how do, we, how do you stop or manage self-sabotaging? First, you have to increase your self-awareness. You have to understand that tendency to self-sabotage. And also, while you're looking for those, those indicators, those triggering events, and it's not always external, sometimes they're internal. Remember, we just talked about that family in the head, those self-statements. So you have to track those as well. Not everything is external. A lot of it is internal, particularly self-sabotaging, right? Is that it starts internal and then you engage in those behaviors and so on and so forth. They're really self-destructive. And then we have to notice those negative behaviors, thoughts, and feelings, and realize that they've become habits. And those habits, just like I mentioned a moment ago, that they start to fill that comfort zone, that unhealthy area to where you're comfortable. And over time, comfort, remember, doesn't mean healthy. It means just what you're used to. So we have to challenge those things. We have to notice those negative beliefs, behaviors, and patterns, and how they impact your life. And then we have to challenge those habits. Now, the way we do that is we make small changes first. We don't make giant leaps, we make small changes first. Now, that doesn't mean that we go back to, remember what I talked about, those goals, those smaller goals and stuff. That's not what this is. These are small changes because, remember, to get to the end of a 10-mile walk, you have to start with a first step, and it starts with each step. That's how long-term change happens. It's with each step. It's patience with yourself. It's continuing that process. And that each day, remind yourself to continue to use these adaptive habits of recognition, challenging those internal thoughts, and continuing to step forward. Are you likely to slide backward? Yeah, because all of us do. And that's okay. Sliding backward isn't validation that you are all those negative things that your family in the head, those triggering people, and all that stuff are seeing. Because sliding backwards, regression is part of it. But when you regress, don't forget, you're going to go forward to the things that help propel you to your goal. And you will get there. Stay the course. Stay strong. Use these videos and my other videos and whatever you need to help move you forward in a positive and healthy way. And you absolutely, positively can do it. I know you can. Leave comments, hopefully to encourage others, because a lot of people read the, the comments, and I think they're fantastic. So thank you all very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.